Hello everybody. So today, since my tooth is cracked, I'm at the dentist getting a crown. Not for my head, for my tooth. So, since I can't be with you today, I thought I'd come at you through video. So, you're still stuck with me today. All right, so I need you to have problem set number six ready to go. I need you to have a pencil in hand. I need you to be active listeners, which means you need to be watching me on the screen and following along too. So you need to be working on this with me, okay? Because there's gonna be opportunities for you to stop the video, do some of these on your own, and then come back and, and check your answers with me, all right? So I need you to be paying attention. So you'll notice that this looks a lot like the place value charts that we've been working with. And remember, you have one in your desk, and so you can get that out at any time. The first two problems that you'll see, actually it's number one, part one and two, um, looks just like this. And you're gonna write numbers in the place value chart to help you to compare them. That's our focus today, we're comparing. But I want you to realize that this is the same place value chart that we've been using all along. So now we're just gonna use it for a slightly different purpose in order to compare. Now, um, We've been talking about stacking the numbers, and we stack the numbers in order to tell whether it was one-tenth, one-one-hundredth, a hundred times, or ten times the other number. So we stack them and then move them using an arrow. That is um, kind of like what we're going to be doing today, because you were comparing them before. You were comparing them to tell where the digit was. And so here what we're going to do is we're going to compare them to tell which one is bigger. Okay. So a slightly different purpose, but still comparing the decimals. So if you take a look at number one on your paper, you're going to see that number one looks a lot like what I have written up here. So we've got the same numbers. So we've got 34 and 223 thousandths. And I know it's thousandths because I can put my cheat there. Okay, so it is thousandths. And then over here on this side, we have 34 and 232 thousandths. So to make it easier to compare, we're gonna go ahead and write those in the number chart. And so I've got 34 and, my decimal's already there, and it's on yours too, 223 thousandths. All right, so I have that one written. So now I've gotta write the other number underneath. We've got 34 and 232 thousandths. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at this and we're gonna read this number, um, or we're gonna compare this number from left to right just like we read it, okay? Same as what you do when you go over to Mrs. Wiggins' class and you are reading. We go left to right. So we're gonna start with the tens, the biggest place, and we're gonna look to see if there's a difference. Well, we've got the three in the tens here and a three in the tens here. So it's exactly the same. So we can't tell which number is bigger yet. So then we move to the ones, okay? So we've got four ones, four ones. Again, they're exactly the same. So again, we cannot tell which is bigger yet. So we move to the tenths. We've got a two in the tenths here, a two in the tenths here. Exactly the same. So then we move to the hundredths. Now we've got a two in the hundredths and a three in the hundredths. Here is where we see our difference. Okay, so when I look at this, I can tell that the three hundredths are more than the two hundredths. So I'm gonna come out here to the side and I like to draw an arrow to the bigger number. So I know that 34 and 232 thousandths is greater than 34 and 223 thousandths. So I need to have the Pac-Man, okay, the greater than, less than sign, it needs to be eating the bigger number. So I've got to come down here, I'm gonna look at this number, and I'm gonna go ahead and underline the one that is bigger. That's gonna help me tell where the, how the Pac-Man is gonna go, okay? So I've got the two here in the hundred, so it's not that one, it's this one, okay? So now, I need to write it so that the Pac-Man, or the greater than, less than sign, is eating the bigger number. So I like to make mine look like a Pac-Man, okay? So now when I read this, the greater than sign, the greater than is pointing this way. So I've got the smaller part here, so that's the less than. 
So we've got less than here. So if I read this as a uh, number sentence, I would read 34 and 223 thousandths is less than 34 and 232 thousandths, right? So do you see how I used our place value chart in order to tell which one was bigger? Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase this and you have another place value chart on your paper, so you're all ready to go. So take a look at the next numbers, and that's what we're gonna write next. And hopefully you got all this written down. Again, when we're comparing, we're gonna go place by place. We're gonna start with the largest place, just like we did the last time, and we're gonna determine from there which one is biggest, okay? Then we'll put the corresponding um, symbol in there, whether it be greater than or less than, depending on what we found. All right, so I'm gonna erase my Pac-Man here. Sorry, I'm dating myself, I like Pac-Man. All right, so now we've got, for the second one, we've got eight tenths, and then we've got 706 thousandths. Now they went ahead and put a zero in the ones place. Now, if the zero wasn't there, if I erase this, I still read it 706 thousandths. Um, sometimes you will see that on testing or uh, in quizzes or whatnot, and I don't want that to fool you. It, there's still no value there, okay? So since there's no value there, um, it really doesn't change it whether the zero is there or not. But since it's there, we're gonna go ahead and write it in. So in the first part, I'm gonna go ahead and write my eight tenths, all right? And then for the second part, I'm gonna go ahead and write my 706 thousandths. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the zero there because they have it, okay? You could actually go ahead and put a zero here too, because that looks a little strange, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put the zero there. So if we start with the ones, there's no, no ones, so we don't have anything to compare there. So then we move to the tenths. We've got eight tenths and we've got seven tenths. Well, obviously, eight tenths is more than seven tenths. So here's where we find our difference. And when we look at it, we can tell that the eight tenths is more. Now, this looks a little confusing because we look at 706 and we think, well, that's a really big number. So obviously, that's got to be more than the eight. Well, no. If we go ahead and fill in the zeros, watch what happens. Go ahead and fill in the zeros here. This becomes 800 thousandths. Well, we've got 800 compared to 706. Whoops, we would have been making a big mistake. So see, if you go ahead and fill those zeros in, then it really makes more sense and you go, oh, okay, well, I can tell 800 is more than 706. So when we look at this and we look at it as just 8 tenths, like it's written here, 8 tenths is bigger. We've got our arrow pointing, so I'm going to underline it so I know that Pac-Man has to be eating the 8 tenths. Go ahead and draw in my Pac-Man, all right? So now I read it, 8 tenths is greater than 706 thousandths. Okay, and I like, I like writing those zeros in it. Just, it makes more sense to me. So we've done the first two on this page. Now down below, 2A, I think you guys could do that one on your own. So I'm gonna skip that one. And I'm gonna move down to letter B, so 2B, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. Now you can look on your paper, you don't have this anymore. So you can get out that place value chart, make sure you use the decimal side. All right, so while you're getting that out, I'll go ahead and erase these and get ready for the next one. So the next one you'll notice, cause I'm doing 2B, 2B is written 83 hundredths compared to and then we have this fraction. Now, hmm, I want you to think about how can you make that so they look the same? Well, there's two different ways you can make that look the same. Because right now I'm looking at that and my, I'm just thinking that's really confusing the way it looks. So I can rewrite this and change this and make this a decimal, okay? That would be one way. So I could go ahead and say, well, you know, 83 hundredths is written 
we put the eight in the tenths and the three in the hundredths. So I could even write it over here. That might be better. Okay, I'll write that over there. So 83 hundredths. Well, how could I rewrite this? Well, I could rewrite that as a fraction. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it this way. So 83 hundredths, remember the last thing we hear goes in the denominator and I hear hundred hundredths and then I put the number that's left, 83 hundredths. Well, look at that. Okay, so then when I write it up here, 83 hundredths, and I wanna write this one because this was a fraction, now I have that as a decimal, 83 hundredths, tenths are the same, hundredths are the same. So when I have to write a symbol in there, I'm not gonna put greater than, I'm not gonna put less than, it is equal to. So anytime you come across something where you have the decimal and then a fraction, go ahead and rewrite one of them so that you'll have both of them in the same form because it'll just make more sense to you. Then it'll be easier too for you to write it into a place value chart and compare them. Okay, that one looked a little strange so I wanted to make sure that we went over that one. Okay, so let's skip down to letter F. Letter F is another one that I would like to go over with you. And letter F is eight and three tenths compared to, and then it says 83 tenths. Now, they're messing with us again. We've got two different forms of a number. So I've got to figure out what does 83 tenths mean? Well, I'm going to talk this out because right now this looks really bizarre and I'm not even sure how to compare them. It's kind of like comparing the um, decimal and that fraction. It just looked weird. So I've got, to, I've got to ask myself some questions about this. How many tenths does it take to make one whole? Because remember, tenths is the same as dimes. All right, and I know that if I have 10 dimes, I have what? I have a dollar, right? So here, if I have 10 tenths, that's gonna equal one, all right? Well, I don't have 10 tenths, I have 83 tenths. Hmm, so if I have 80 tenths, because this is, this is like 80 and three, remember how we, Decomposed numbers, we do that a lot in our number talks. Well, this is 80 and three, right? If I split it up into its place value parts. So if I have 80 tenths, what does that equal? What is that the same as? Hmm, well, I've got 10 tenths equal one. So 20 tenths would equal two. 30 tenths would equal three. Hmm, I'm seeing a pattern here. 40 tenths would equal four. So 80 tenths would equal what was that? You're right, eight. So this is eight whole. So we've got eight whole, whole things in that 83 tenths, eight whole. And then what about this three tenths? Three tenths, what's three tenths? Three tenths looks like this, but three tenths also looks like this. So that would go after the eight, okay? so. We've got all this information here. Now I'm looking at this, and now I can put this on my place value chart because I've got eight and three tenths. Oh, I, I'm, I'm loving this because this is like unlocking a mystery. This is a number mystery and we're unlocking this mystery. So we've got eight and three tenths right here and we had the 83 tenths, which I mean, I can't put 83 right here. So now I can put that in my place value chart because I know 83 tenths is the same as eight and three tenths. Eight and three tenths. Uh, look at this again. All right, so I'm comparing these. I've got eight ones, eight ones, three tenths, three tenths. They're equivalent or equal, all right? But see, you have to unlock that mystery of what in the heck does that mean? You've gotta break it apart, break that up, okay? Break it up into its parts so that you can figure it out, all right? I hope you have that down. So we did, we just did letter F. Well, look at G right underneath that. That's another one. It's, it's written in two different forms. It looks, it looks strange. So we need to unlock what all that means. 
okay? We have to unlock it so that we can put it in the place value chart, because right now, I can't put those words in the place value chart. Okay, so we've got five and eight tenths, and that's compared to, and I've got 58, notice there's the dash there. Remember I told you that's important to write. See, now you have it on a paper, on an official worksheet, and that's how they write it too. Hundreds. Now I'm afraid this is going off the screen, so I'm gonna write hundreds under here. All right, hundreds. Now, how in the world am I gonna write that? Now right now, two different forms, I can't compare those yet. Doesn't make any sense to me. So I've gotta make it make sense. So I've got 58 hundreds. Oh gosh, I, you know, 58 hundreds. Hundreds is the last thing I hear so that eight is gonna to have to go in the hundredths place. So I've got to put that, let's see, I've got 58 hundredths. Now, is that in the hundredths place? Let me check. There's my cheat. It certainly is 58 hundredths. Okay, now I've got them in the same form so I can compare them. So I've got five and eight tenths, and here I've got the 58 hundredths, 58 hundredths, this looks weird to me. I don't like it the way it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and put zeros so that we've got the same, same number of digits in each one. It just looks weird to me. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the biggest place, which is the ones place. So I've got five ones and zero ones. Well, that's easy. Okay, um, that's a no brainer. So obviously five and eight tenths is bigger. So I'm gonna underline that. Pac-Man's gonna eat the bigger number. So, this, the bigger part of the mouth is pointing towards this number, so it's gonna be greater than, so I've got five and eight tenths is greater than 58 hundredths, all right? So see how unlocking that just helps you to figure it out, okay? Now I know I've skipped some of these. We'll come back to those and, um, and go over them, all right? So I want you to go ahead and once you get this written down, then go ahead and turn your paper over. And I'm trying to figure out which one I wanna do here. I wanna do one more. Um, I think we're gonna do K. K looks like a good one. All right, so we've got four and 15 hundredths. Okay, and let me erase this part. It'd be easier just to do the whole thing. Okay, and then we've got 415 tenths. All right, so here we go. Again, not the same form. So I have to make sure that I put them in the same form. I can't put that, I can't put 415 tenths up here in my place value chart. I like to use the place value chart, it makes sense to me. So. 415 tenths. Remember our conversation about tenths. Remember if I have 10 tenths, I have one. So now I have 415 tenths. 400, 10 tenths, and five. So there's one. Now I've got 400, okay? So how am I gonna figure that out? Well, you know what? I'm noticing the zeros here. I'm noticing that this has two zeros. I'm noticing that this has one zero. If I have one tenth, I know I have one whole. If I have 400 tenths, I also have 40. Place value, okay? So this looks like 415, but I've gotta push this two places past the decimal, aha, and then I have five tenths. So this is actually 415 tenths is the same as 41 and five tenths. Now I can compare them, holy cow. I am on a roll unlocking these numbers. So now I've got 41, whoops, it's like a seven, sorry about that, five tenths. Now again, I've got, this is like totally off balance for me. I've got to put, make it in balance. It just looks strange. So I'm gonna start with the tens. 
I've got zero tens and four tens. Well, that's a no-brainer. Forty dollars, zero dollars, come on. All right, so 41 and 5 tenths is bigger, so I'm gonna underline it. Math's gonna eat the bigger number. Ta-da! All right, now I've got the small part pointing this way, so this is gonna be less than or smaller than. Four and 15 hundredths is less than or smaller than. 41 and 5 tenths, okay? So that was letter K. So I've left some of them for you to do. However, I want to move on before you do your independent work, and I wanna take a look at these next um, comparing problems. Now, they say some stuff that's kind of strange, and I wanna explain that, because um, these, this wording you might see later on, okay? So you can use a place value chart, but I'm gonna show you a different technique because you always have to have different techniques. This may make sense to you, but I have a different technique that might also make sense. So I'm gonna erase this, and I'm gonna show you something I call stack the numbers. All right, so we've stacked the numbers before. We've used this technique. So we're gonna use this technique again, just in a little different way. So we have a list of numbers, and you're gonna to have to put them in order. Now, I've called it greatest to least. They're calling it in increasing order. What in the world does that mean? So on your paper, where it says increasing order, okay? Well, what does increasing mean? Well, if something is increasing, it's getting bigger, all right? I think of blowing up a balloon. I increase the size of the balloon every time I blow into it, right? It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, that's what they're telling you here. So increasing means gets bigger. It's just a fancy way to say that, okay? So above where it says increasing order, right, gets bigger, so you remember. Now notice here, we've got this ending, but this looks like the word increase. So if we take the ending off and just put an E there, it's increase, and that just means getting bigger, okay? All right, so let's take a look at 3A. All right, so the list is, I'm gonna write my little list up here, and I've got the same paper you have. So we've got three and 49 thousandths, okay? Then our next number is three and 59 thousandths, okay? Then we've got um, three and five hundredths, and last but not least, we've got three and four hundredths. All right, so I've got all these numbers. I'm going to go ahead and stack them up and compare them just like I did before. I just won't have tens, ones, um, tenths, hundredths, okay? So I just, I won't have that but I'll use that information from the stacking in order to put these in order, increasing order, which means the biggest number is gonna be at the very end. So the smallest number is gonna be at the very beginning. So it sounds really weird when it says increasing, but it just means it gets bigger as you go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, and I've got the numbers written over here, so since this guy's already here, I'm not gonna rewrite him. I'm just gonna rewrite all the rest of these underneath him. So I've got, my second number here, then I've got my third number here. Again, this is messing with my feng shui. I've got to write the zero in there. And then, all right, so I've got everything stacked and ready to go. So now I can go ahead and compare them. Well, this is easy. In the ones place, they're all the same. So I got to go to the tenths. I look at the tenths, they're all the same. So I've got to go to the hundredths. Now, Here's where I'm noticing some differences. However, look here, I've got a four and a four, I've got five and five. I need to figure out which one is smallest. So now, there are two that could be the smallest, the ones with the four and the hundreds. So I'm not gonna look at these guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the, that circle and I'm gonna change it and circle this one and circle this one because that's where my eyes need to focus, okay? So now I'm looking at three and 49 hundredths, 
three and forty, or three and forty-nine thousandths, sorry, and three and forty thousandths. I could read it four hundredths, or I could read it forty thousandths. Either way. So I'm looking at these two, and I have to go to the thousandths place to tell which one's different. Well, I've got a nine here and a zero here. Since it's increasing order, I need the smallest number. Well, this guy wins. He gets to be first in this um, lineup. And so I'm gonna put him three and, and I'm gonna go ahead and write it the way I have it over here. So now that I'm finished with him, I don't want you to scribble on your paper. Never scribble on your paper. Just write one line through him so you know he's done with. He's already on the line, he's done. So now I'm looking at these again, and this one came in next place because we've got four, five, and five. So 49 thousandths gets next place. Three and 49 thousandths. All right, so now he's done. So now I've got these two. So far with the hundredths, they were tied. Okay, so now I've got to figure out who comes in next and who is last. So we've got the threes, the zeros, the fives, all the same, so I go to the thousandths. So I've got nine and I've got zero. And at this point, you've gotta be really careful and you've got to remind yourself, I'm going in increasing order. That means the largest number is last. So I've got the zero, that one's gonna go next because the nine is gonna go last, okay? So I've got three and 50 thousandths, okay? And then last but not least, I've got three and 59 thousandths, okay? All right. So since we were going in increasing order, increasing order, it gets bigger as I go. So let's make sure it got bigger as I go. So I'm gonna take a look at the hundredths and the thousandths because that's where my differences were. Okay, so I've got 40 here, 49 here, 50, 59. Increasing order, the largest one is last. So that's my way to check, okay? I use them all, I have them all crossed out. They are in increasing order. So there is part B, I'm gonna have you do on your own, okay? So part B, we're gonna skip that one for now, and we're gonna go on to number four where it says, arrange the numbers in decreasing order. So we've got a whole different set of directions that we need to unpack. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. Um, at any point, if, you, if I'm going too fast, the sub can go ahead and um, pause so that you can have plenty of time to write these things down, okay? So now we've got a whole different word. We've got decreasing. We had increasing. Well, in tells me, increasing tells me it's getting bigger. What does decrease mean? Decreasing. And notice I said the root word there, or I said the, if I take this ending off, it is the word decrease. Well, when something decreases, it gets smaller, okay? So again, I think of a balloon. If I'm blowing up that balloon, it's increasing, increasing, increasing. If I let it go, the air goes out of it, it decreases. Okay, so decreasing order. So that means it gets smaller. Instead of getting bigger, it gets smaller as I go. So my biggest number is gonna go first. These crazy directions, I'm telling you. All right, so we've got seven and 608 thousandths. We've got six or seven and 68 hundredths. We've got seven and six tenths. Oh my gosh, this is really messing with me. I've got three digits after the decimal, two digits, one digit. I can tell what I'm gonna be doing when I'm stacking these. Seven and 68 thousandths. All right, so again, I'm looking at these, I'm gonna stack the numbers. It's the easiest way to go. So since I already have this one here, I'm gonna go ahead and use this one and then I'm gonna write the other numbers underneath it. And seven, 
Okay, this looks really weird to me. I want to make them all have the same number of digits. Okay, it's just going to be easier to tell how to write them. Then I'm going to write my line here for my answer. All right, so again, left to right, that's how I compare. So the ones, they're all the same. That's easy. And then we've got the tenths. Now, remember, I'm going, I'm getting smaller as I go. So I want the biggest number here. So the directions are different. So I need the biggest number. So I've got six, six, a six, and a zero. Well, I can go ahead and take this out because this is not gonna be the biggest. I've got sixes right here. I cannot yet tell which one's the biggest. However, I do know that this one is not an option. So I'm not gonna look at this one anymore, okay? All right, so now I've got zero, eight, and zero. Well, that's pretty easy. The eight is bigger than the zeros. So this is gonna be my largest number. So I'm gonna write seven and 680 thousandths. Now, did you notice I added the zero and I kept it there? Remember I told you that I can add zeros onto this end of the number. I can add a, a billion zeros there and it does not change the value of this number. It's just like taking the number 10 and adding a zero to a front, the front of it. It's still 10. The only time it, it adds value to it is if I add the zeros on the other side, okay? So it's the same thing with the decimal, all right? So I can go ahead and cross this out because that one is the largest number in this set. Now, I've got three numbers left. I remember that this one is, is not an option. So I'm gonna compare these two. So I've got six tenths and six tenths, zero hundredths, zero hundredths, eight hundredths, zero hundredths. So now, remember, I'm getting smaller as I go. So I have the biggest number here. Which one is the next biggest number? Well, I've got eight in the thousandths, zero in the thousandths. This one wins out. This is gonna be the next biggest number. So we've got seven, 608 thousandths. Now I'm noticing something here, okay? I've got 680, which I know is the biggest, okay, after the decimal. I've got 608 here. So when I say the next one, it needs to be smaller than these two. I think I'm gonna move this guy over, so I'm thinking I'm gonna run out of room. All right, I'm gonna move him over 608, and then I'm gonna put a line through him. So now I've got these two numbers. Well, I already know when I compared the tenths that this one is larger, so this one has to be in third place. Now, let's take a look at what's after the decimal. I've got 680, 608, 600. Are they decreasing in order? Are they getting smaller? They absolutely are. Okay, so now I've got seven and 68 thousandths. So that's the last place. So let's take a look at these again. We're just gonna say what's after the decimal. 680 thousandths, 608 thousandths, 600 thousandths, 68 thousandths. Do you see how it's going in decreasing order? All right, so I'm hoping that you're getting the idea of how to compare numbers. So today what we did was we talked about greater than, less than, equal to, okay? So putting symbols in between the two numbers. We've also talked about if you see a fraction or you see it in word form, it's best to change it so that you can compare those in decimal form and it makes it simpler, okay? Getting it in the same form. Also, when we're comparing and arranging numbers, we have to look carefully at the directions and figure out what those words mean. See how we kind of acted out with a balloon? Okay, that will help you. And then we can go ahead and compare them, stacking the numbers, and putting them in, in the order in which the directions asked, okay? So there were some that we skipped, that's your independent work. So I want you to be working on that. You can do it. And I think what we'll do is we'll, uh, I'll have this sub collect it, and we'll go over this on Monday, all right? You can do it. I want you to keep thinking, keep watching, always stay curious, and I will see you on Monday.